Welcome to the News Hour. We begin with breaking news coming out of the British capital. Former Finance Minister Rishi Sunak has won the race to become the UK's new Prime Minister. His sole challenger to lead the Conservative Party, Penny Mordaunt, has dropped out. She's apparently failed to secure the support of 100 MPs needed to stay in the contest. Rishi Sunak will replace Liz Truss, who resigned just six weeks into the job. Andrew Simmons, our correspondent, following events for us from Downing Street. This is a fast-moving story and an announcement just in the last few minutes, it seems, Andrew. Yes, uh, it went right to the wire, literally to the second, uh, right up there. There was a big debate going on with the campaign group uh, that has been supporting Penny Mordaunt. Uh, she was insistent that she thought she could get beyond 100 votes. Uh, one of her campaign managers from the first, uh, the last, should I say, uh, a leadership battle in the summer, uh, George Freeman, had been trying to persuade her to throw the towel in to actually, regardless of whether she she could get just beyond 100 or not to actually basically say in the interests of unity that she wanted to stand down. Now that has happened and there is a statement in which she explains that she wants to have more party unity, that she had uh, gone uh, along with her instincts all along uh, and she certainly got a lot, quite a lot of support from uh, supporters of Boris Johnson uh, who pulled out, Johnson pulled out and they, quite a few of them, um, transferred to Mordaunt but also so a lot of them transferred to Sunak. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that Sunak is the only candidate now, and that means an automatic process in which he'll become, first of all, leader of the Conservative Party, something he's always wanted. Uh, he's the youngest, uh, 42 years of age, he's going to be the youngest prime minister in UK history, and that prime minister's role will kick in uh, once Liz Truss formally resigns uh, before uh, King Charles III, and then... Andrew, I'm going to just interrupt there. you there, sorry. And, we have uh, to go to the now, committee rooms uh, uh, in uh, Parliament, where the 1922 committee is meeting. Sir Graham Brady is speaking now. Let's just listen in. Right, it was uh, obviously Sir Graham Brady, uh, the chairman of the 1922 committee, making a very brief statement that the committee will announce the result at 2.30 local British time. Obviously, it's 1,300 hours uh, GMT uh, at the moment. Uh, and Andrew, obviously, they, it seems the committee is also reacting perhaps to that statement from Penny Morden. It's breaking news to them as well. Well, uh, yes, indeed. I mean, basically, uh, Mordaunt has put out a statement. She says these are un unprecedented times. Despite the compressed timetable for the leadership contest, it's clear that colleagues feel we need certainty right now, today. They have taken uh, this decision in good faith for the good of the country. Members should know that the proposition has been fairly and thoroughly tested by the agreed 1922 process. As a, result, as a result, we've now chosen our next Prime Minister. This decision is an historic one and shows once again uh, the diversity and talent of our party. Rishi has my full support and I'm proud of the campaign we ran and grateful to all those across all sides of our party who gave me their backing. So there you have it. You know Penny Mordaunt uh, probably going to be in line possibly for uh, a senior position in a Sunak government, who knows, very likely. Uh, but she has gone absolutely to the wire. A lot of her supporters, a lot of her managers, those aides who have helped her all along, had disagreed with her staying in so long. She thought she could do it. They thought that every extra hour spent of uncertainty in this situation was going to cost the party dear in terms of unity. And there is a major issue with disunity uh, with the Conservative Party right now. Uh, Sunak has uh, a mountain to climb, uh, not just with the uh, economic crisis. He has to really work 
on unity. The ERG, the uh, European Research Group, uh, is a right-wing section of the party. It sees things going wrong with more moderate forces at work. Amongst them, uh, the, the finance minister now, uh, who has been who intervened with the Liz Truss crisis uh, and got everything sorted out. Jeremy Hunt is seen as in, uh, a, mod a moderate figure. Now, the sort of decisions he made in reversing all of Liz Truss's uh, e economic policies, particularly the tax cuts, the decisions he made are pretty much in line with the thinking of the Prime Minister in waiting now, uh, because uh, Sunak... Uh, had described Liz Truss's ideas on tax cutting and growing the economy immediately uh, and not doing the sums to actually work all this out as fairy tale economics. And he had declared in the summer when he was runner up to Truss. Uh, he had declared that uh, if he, he'd sooner not make uh, the, uh, the, the, the leadership of the Conservative Party to lose out to her rather than come up with uh, promises he, he couldn't match in reality. So therefore, you had a clear viewpoint there. And now uh, he is in this position at 42 years of age as being uh, Prime Minister in waiting. It could be within a matter of 24 hours Indeed. or even less. Uh, that he uh, takes that position and comes to Downing Street. And, of course, he's got his hands full with a whole range of issues that, you know, for, you might say, the ordinary British man and woman in the street, you know, uh, party elections are fine. At the end of the day, their real concern is the cost of living, how they're going to pay their bills, do they have a job, how will they get to a job if there are various strikes in operation around the country, protests galore from people who don't like uh, what the Conservatives have been doing this past Past, uh, decade or so. Um, he has to hit the ground running. We spoke to uh, a previous uh, Conservative MP and they said he really does have to get control of the economy and gain the, the trust of the markets. The two very vital points, Andrew. They certainly are. You listed a, a long a pile of reasons that uh, uh, mean that Sunak's not going to find it easy at all. But he is pretty well placed. It, it, in some ways, uh, some of the spade work has already been done in terms of putting out the fire that Liz Truss created, because that it, it, it did cause a storm in the markets. The, the, the whole list of, of tax cuts and, and, and ideas that, frankly, uh, according to Sunak and according according to many others, belong to Disneyland, because it, none, none of it was going to be really possible without crashing the economy more. And indeed, the economy did start doing precisely that. It started to crash. Uh, the fire was put out uh, by, uh, by Jeremy Hunt. Uh, he came in, he took over. Downing Street really has had a prime minister in all, all but certainly not in only in name, uh, because Liz Truss has has basically had the job taken off by a stand-in chancellor. And um, that, that, that role that uh, he played uh, basically saved the UK from going down under completely uh, in terms of its uh, standing in the markets. Uh, so what is happening now, a process which is incredibly fast-moving, much faster-moving, believe it or not, than the, the crisis that we've seen over the past mm. few weeks. This has just been an extraordinarily dramatic type of politics that the UK has never seen before. No. Some would say not only dramatic, uh, theatrical, uh, if not farcical in places. Indeed, Andrew, and who knows what might happen in the, in the next few uh, days. Uh, do stay with us. Of course, we'll be getting the latest from you in a moment.